Hi everybody, welcome to Pinky Tech. I'm Joe, and today I've got a complete gaming setup for you for under $900. Alright, so starting off from right to left, uh, we'll go with the big guy here. That is the case. We're using the Lian Li 205M. Uh, this is a micro ATX case, as M designates in most things computer related. Uh, it does have a tempered glass side panel. It is black. Uh, no mesh front panel, which for me is actually going to be a first. I prefer mesh front panels. However, our sales associate at Micro Center told me that it does have the two side inlets, and with the way you mount the fans, it gets plenty of air into the case. And so I think, hey, we should be okay with that. Uh, but we're going to test it out. We'll do some uh, benchmarking on it. Uh, nothing, you know, this isn't Gamers Nexus, so don't expect that. But uh, we're going to see what it will do here for us, and I think it will be okay. So we're going to start off with that for the case. Uh, down here we've got the RAM that is a 2x8 gig kit of T-Force Vulcan. Yes, T-Force Vulcan uh, that we're using today. It is 3200 megahertz and CL16, so kind of a your average everyday kit of RAM. Um, however, I do like T-Force Delta. They are very good value for the money. Uh, that costs about $50. And oh, by the way, the case uh, itself was about $55 as well. Uh, this I got at Micro Center. It is a Micro Center exclusive as well, by the way. So you may have to look for like the 215, I think is the equivalent one that you can find other elsewhere if you don't have a Micro Center near you. Uh, for the Motherboard, we have an ASRock H470M Pro 4, and that leads us right into this guy. So this is the i5-10400 uh, Intel. It is six cores and 12 threads. Uh, the only real thing that I, I'm not super thrilled about is it's only a 2.9 uh, gigahertz base clock, uh, but it does boost up to, I think it's 3.9 or 4 gigahertz, something like that. So I haven't used this guy before, but when I went into Micro Center, they were out of all the Ryzen 5 3600s. No 3600, no 3600X, not even a 3600 XT, just basically they were cleared out except for the 3950Xs um, for you know their AMD processor. So I had to kind of put, put this together on the fly, but here we are. So this is the Intel. Uh, we'll use that 10400 and we'll see how it goes. Um, I will do some benchmarks at the end so that you guys can see kind of how this stacks up. And I have a Ryzen 2600X in my rig. Maybe I'll run the same benchmarks on mine and kind of see where it gets as well. Uh, for the graphics card today, uh, we do have uh, RX 580, uh, 8 gigabyte variant. So we found this is actually for $200 and uh, Basically a very good value uh, card. Um, I would recommend actually getting these used. However, I'm building this for a family member and wanting to go all new parts. Uh, he had a $900 budget and this seemed to be the best card we can get into that budget. So uh, like I said, all this is sub $900. That works out well. Uh, by the way, for the processor, it was $149 on sale at Micro Center, and the board itself was another $100. And of course, you get a $20 discount if you bundle with Micro Center. So, um, and then that leads us into storage. Uh, so the the meta with storage nowadays is getting a 120 gig drive and then pairing a terabyte drive with it. So you have a fast operating system, but all your games and everything else ends up on that. Um, to be honest with you guys, uh, this is what you should be looking at. So this is a Team Force uh, GX2. It's a two and a half gig SSD. Um, now this is not the fastest SSD on the market, but it came in at about $75. So when you're looking for things like that, $75 for a terabyte of storage, you don't have to manage multiple drives or multiple SATA cables for the drives, all that good stuff. This really cuts down one, your cable management, but two, your actual disk space management because you're no longer having to deal with your operating system drive plus a separate drive to move all your game libraries, etc. So I would actually start looking at something like this. Um, I believe this is a DRAMless um, SSD, so you can roast me in the comments for that, but is what it is it's very good it's going to run plenty fast for just gaming and light business work which is what he's intended to do with the system so um, this is the way i would go versus 120 gig ssd and then a terabyte drive afterwards and if you do fill up this terabyte drive you can always throw in a, a terabyte or two terabyte spinning hard disk as well later down the road plenty of expandability all right that brings us on to the power supply so we got this 650 watt uh aris gaming aris gaming I'm not sure how to pronounce the brand at this point, but I've seen it popping up all over the place. Um, PC Tech Hustle, they did a, a good overview of this power supply. It was the 500 watt variant, I think it was. Um, so I decided to give it a try, but 650 watts and uh, 
you know, it has all the black sleeve cables and all that good stuff. So really, really good value, it seems like. This came in at around $50. Uh, the 500 watt variant was available for about $42, $43. So um, I went with the 650 watt just because we do have an RX 580. And as you guys know, that card is a bit more power hungry than other cards. So this should give us plenty of headroom and allow nice, efficient operation, quiet operation, and not have to worry about, you know, uh, coming up against the, the limits of a 500 watt power supply. All right, moving on, we've got the monitor over here. Uh, nothing to write home about. It's an Acer uh, SBO. I forget the model number on here. I could probably read it, but I'm not going to. So, uh, but this Acer one, I'll have a link to it in the description. As a matter of fact, I'll have a link for uh, most all of this stuff down below. Uh, it is affiliate link, so it does help out the channel if you wanna purchase any of this stuff. Um, but this is just a 22 inch. It is an IPS monitor, very good viewing angles and stuff like that. Um, and it is one millisecond refresh. So, uh, you know, 1080p gaming, this should more than fit the bill for, for what it is. So I think we're good there. We'll test it out. Once again, we'll let you see on all the benchmarks. And then also picked up uh, this Red Dragon kit. This was about $35, but it is an RGB keyboard and mouse. It is the only bit of flash and color we're going to have in here with the exception of the, I believe there are LED lights on this RX 580. Um, so, you know, not a lot of aesthetics in this build. However, he really wanted functionality. He didn't really care how it looked. Um, in the, you know, future, if we want to add some aesthetics, we can always put in an RGB strip or maybe some uh, RGB case fans, stuff like that. But really, we wanted to spend every dime we could putting performance into the system. Uh, because, you know, $30 fans doesn't seem like a whole lot, but really it's the difference between getting an RX 580 and maybe a 1650, which isn't going to perform as well. So always go performance first and then RGB. All right, guys, and with the parts all out of the way, let's get this thing built up. We'll get Windows installed and then we'll start doing some benchmarks and see how she runs. Well, this would be the spot where a good YouTuber would actually stop and show you all the B-roll of the system that he put together, except for I didn't get the B-roll and already gave the guy the computer, so I can't get it now. So, yeah, you know, it's, well, I did get the benchmark, so do you want to talk about the benchmarks? Yeah. What? No, I had this shirt on before. Man, leave me alone. It's already going downhill with this video, okay? All right, so as for the benchmarks, we ran Superposition, and then we ran a couple others, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, etc. So Superposition, uh, it did about where I expected it to in the mid-5,000s for the score. Uh, with an RX 580, that's a pretty good score to get, I would think. Um, I did match that with my own rig, but it has a 1070, and of course it blew it out of the water. So I don't think that's really fair, because we were kind of looking at the performance between the 10400 and the 2600X. So, eh, I, I, I didn't bother running the rest of the Time Spy and Fire Strike and all that good stuff on, on my particular rig. Um, but we did go ahead and run Cinebench R23, and those scores are actually pretty interesting. So for the uh, 10400K, it ran a single threaded score of 1093 versus my 2600X, which ran a single threaded score of 1030. And for the multi-threaded scores, the 10400 ran at uh, 7,926, and my 2600X ran at 7,537. So uh, it seems the 10400 has quite a leg up on the 2600X. And keep in mind too, that was assisted because my 2600X is sitting with an AIO on it, and we were just using the stock Intel cooler. My 2600X is overclocked to four gigahertz, and we were just using the standard boost algorithms inside of the 10400. So uh, quite a nice little chip, it looks like. Uh, 
As for the build itself, I think it came together well. Um, as you can see in some of the time-lapse footage that I put in there, uh, nice clean build, uh, nothing really to write home about as far as the build process itself. Uh, two things that I probably would change about the system though is I would swap out the stock cooler uh, for something like maybe a Hyper 212 Evo or something like that, some kind of aftermarket cooler. Um, as the chip, it ran well during gaming sessions. It stayed you know, under 70 degrees Celsius, uh, so nothing, you know, too obnoxious there but during uh, the synthetic workloads like if I ran prime 95 which I do on all my builds just to kind of test the ability on it when I first put it together uh, prime 95 would actually run the processor up to 95 degrees and then it would start thermal throttling to bring it back down under 90 um, so that was it but that was only during that workload and prime 95 as everyone knows is not a very realistic workload uh, for a machine so wasn't worried about it going out into the real world because like I said all the gaming and other benchmarks were were relatively uh, cool uh, with the Intel stock cooler. Um, the other thing I would change is the RX 580. So the 580 itself is probably the best graphics card you're going to find right now for about $200. And that's just because graphics card prices are really jacked up. If you go to the used market, you should be able to get a 1070 for around $200. So a better price to performance. But if you're looking to buy all new, uh, that's probably what you're looking at. Now the RX 580 that I got, while it is a good card, the fans are very very loud like sound like a jet engine um, it, it, it was it was obnoxious so what I ended up doing is the card itself even though the fans were running so high and so loud the card itself was really cool um, during gaming it was at like 50 degrees Celsius so what I ended up doing is just actually taking the fan curve and making a custom fan curve using MSI afterburner uh, to where it just kept it down um, the fans were running and the card was at 30 degrees Celsius there's no need for that um, so we built the fan curve to where it doesn't really ramp up the fans until it hits around 70 degrees Celsius and then it'll start running the fans a bit to cool it down and that really did a number for that card um, it, but if you're going to use uh, that RX 580 the power color then I would say you probably need to do a custom fan curve just because the card is loud otherwise maybe spend an extra twenty dollars and go with the the sapphire version of the card which is a bit quieter but that's it guys let me know what you think about the build um, sorry I didn't get the b-roll so you can actually see it put together um, as far as the other components it's just a keyboard and mouse they work just fine the the monitor was very nice um, one more note about the monitor too before we get out of here is the monitor itself did not have vase amount so you can't mount it but he wasn't going to anyway so not a big deal but if you are looking at that monitor just a consideration there that you need to have um, but other than that let me know what you think about the build if you liked it hit the like button if you didn't like it thumbs down uh, if you leave a thumbs down then put a comment in there so that I, you can tell me why you don't like it and you know we can have a debate in the comment section about why I should have used something else and why everything I picked was wrong because it doesn't matter what we pick when we video, it's always wrong to somebody. So I look forward to the conversation, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching, and as always, see you in the next video.